Today we discuss how to work faster in Blender. Not how to render faster, I mean how to speed up our workflow by minimizing redundant tasks, optimizing our default settings, and maximizing our use of keyboard shortcuts. These are like having cheat codes for Blender. Here are nine ways to work faster in Blender, and the last one really ties all the other ones together, so stick around. Number one is customize your workspace. The first key to speeding up Blender is to fully customize the workspace so we have everything we use often at our fingertips and we bury what we don't use that much. Here's how. Start with the workspace you use the most. We can change it or duplicate it to create a clone and modify this new one. Reconfigure this workspace so what we need is where we need it. Instead of changing back and forth from camera view, set up a preview space down here. Lock it to the camera view and remove all the extra distractions from the screen. If you are always using the preferences, but never the outliner, give the preferences more real estate. If we drag and drop a lot of things from the asset browser, find a place for that. There's a ton of customization we can do, not just to one workspace, but actually to all of them. And this is the first step to working faster in Blender. Number two, customize or add keyboard shortcuts. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts in Blender, but they don't cover everything. If you find yourself turning something on and off a lot, add a keyboard shortcut. I have a whole video on just this, but normally right clicking something gives us an option to assign a shortcut. We can even create a shortcut to add a specific modifier to objects. Start with D, semicolon, and apostrophe because those keys aren't assigned to anything by default. And watch this keyboard shortcut video for more info on this. Number three, use quick favorites. One of the best features in Blender may be the quick favorites menu. I wish it was in every software program. When we want something quickly available but prefer not to assign it a shortcut, right click on it. Choose add to quick favorites. Now when we want to use that action, that function, or whatever, just press Q on the keyboard. And this menu comes up with what we've added to the quick favorites. Blender will give us different quick favorite menus for different modes and editors. So we will only see the quick favorites that we can actually use at that moment. So go nuts because Q is your friend. Number four, use the asset browser. The asset browser in Blender is a phenomenal tool for quickly finding and bringing in objects, materials, collections, and more into a Blender file. It takes a little bit of time to set up and you'll want to keep your libraries really organized. But this is like steroids for your productivity in Blender. What we'll need to do is wherever we keep assets we want available in the asset browser, we'll need to mark that file path or folder as a library. We can make multiple libraries or just have one. It's up to you. Then we need to mark individual objects, collections, or whatever as assets. And after that, we just drag them and drop them into our scene. I have a video for how to use Blender's asset browser that I created when it first came out. And honestly, not that much has changed. But I also have a blog post linked to below with step-by-step -step instructions for how to use the asset browser in Blender. Having a super organized asset library and reusing assets from previous projects is a great way to work faster in Blender. Number five, node groups. Whether you use nodes in the shader editor or the geometry node editor, a lot or a little, I bet you redo a lot of steps every time. Well, we can trim that wasted time down by creating and saving custom node groups. Once we set up a series of nodes in a pattern we want to save, group them by pressing Control G. We can actually go a little further and place custom inputs on the node group by dragging additional input sockets to the sockets we want available in the master node save the node group, or even save it as a fake user so it'll always be available in this file. Combine this tip with my last tip and we can actually have this node group available in every Blender file we open in the future. We'll get there in a second. Or we could save this node in the material and add that material to the asset browser for quick access. Lots of options. I actually have a video about other ways of organizing nodes, so don't forget to binge all the linked videos down in the description. And if you're still here, hitting that like button and becoming a subscriber means the world to me. It helps a lot. Thank you so much. Number six is using file browser favorites. In Blender, we can save frequently visited folders as bookmarks. So if there's a folder we find ourselves opening often to get something, go up here and click add bookmark. Now, whichever folder we're in will be a single click away next time we need to get there. Number seven, make your hardware work for you. There are all sorts of keyboards, mouses, mice, and other accessories out there. I use a mouse that has a few extra programmable buttons on it, and I program them to do specific things. For example, I have a button programmed to select linked. Same with my drawing tablet, I've programmed the buttons to do specific things. I also use this thing, the Elgato Stream Deck. Even though it's designed for streaming, it's basically a fully programmable dynamic keyboard. 
we can program complicated macros into each button and have folders and other actions saved. This is useful across a bunch of different programs and it definitely helps in Blender. I'll of course link to it in the description. But the point is to take advantage of hardware accessories that you have available to streamline your workflow. Number eight is don't be ashamed to use add-ons. Add-ons and extensions are a beautiful thing in Blender. Whether they're free or paid, add-ons can greatly speed up processes that take ridiculous amounts of time in Blender. One I use all the time is GeoScatter to scatter massive environments very quickly. But there are many more that can help with modeling, rigging, making materials, animation, and so much more. Use them to your advantage when it makes sense. And the final tip, this tip will bring all the other tips together. Start a new blank Blender file. Then create your custom workspace. Make your custom keyboard shortcuts. And go in and change any setting where you want the default to be something different. You can add a default HDRI. And believe it or not, we can actually delete the default cube once and for all. Make this blank Blender file exactly how you want Blender to be every time you open it. Then go to File, Defaults, Save Startup File. This makes the current Blender file the default file. Now, every time we open Blender, this will be our starting point. We can easily revert to the default scene, but take advantage of this because it'll save you a lot of time. I hope that all helped. I put a bunch of links down in the description to use as resources. Hit that like button. Please show some love and become a subscriber. Thank you so much and stay creative.